The ventriloquist figure, the dummy, is your partner. When working with your ventriloquist figure, move its head gracefully, left or right. Don't jerk the head, as many beginners tend to do. And don't have the dummy stare continuously at the audience so that it speaks all its lines to them. When the dummy is talking to the ventriloquist, it should look at the ventriloquist. And when talking to the audience, it should look at the audience. Never sit sideways to the audience. While they may get a very fine view of your profile, <laughs> you will be talking to the side of the stage. Doing that, you risk not being heard at all. So face front. Speak your lines facing the audience. But still, you want to look at the dummy when you're talking to it. You can reach a happy compromise between semi-profile and front view by having your partner's head just slightly in front of you. Your heads will seem to be side by side, and you will give the impression of looking directly at your partner. But what you are really doing is looking at the dummy out of the corner of your eye. Under any circumstances, when you are using a microphone, it is most important for you to face the mic. Treat your partner as if the dummy were a living person and a good friend of yours. Never leave your ventriloquist figure on the floor or in an open suitcase in view of the audience. And keep this in mind. To get the most out of your ventriloquism, you must try to become a writer of comedy, an actor, and a comedian. Now let us listen to Mortimer Snurd. Notice the fun I have with his stupidity. It is a different style of comedy because his personality is different from Charlie's. Charlie likes to get into trouble. He likes the girls, and while Mortimer is bashful, and I'm afraid stupid, but he has one advantage over many of us. He is stupid, but he knows that he is stupid, and that almost makes him smart. Let's listen. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bergen. Well, hello, Mortimer. What are you doing with that mail order catalog there? Oh, I'm trying to order them a long winter of uh, <laughs> Your long winter what? The unmentionables. Oh. Well, do you need assistance? Uh, yo, yo. I need underwear. I need underwear, yeah. Well, now, you let me help you fill out this order blank. Yeah. Now, let's see. Uh, length? Mm hmm uh, Will you want them extra long? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. All winter. All winter, yes. <laughs> well, I, I have to put down your measurements. So, how long are your legs? Uh, starting at which end? Oh, I... <laughs> Maybe I can find out this way. How tall are you? Well, let me see. Um, um, well, I'd say I, uh, I reach from, from here clear down to the floor. You know. Well, don't you see, if I get your exact measurements now, yeah. you'll get a better fit in the end. Well, I want it to fit good all over. Yeah, I know. Uh, oh. Now, uh, do you want long or short sleeves? Uh, yes, sirree. <laughs> yes, sirree what? Well, you don't. <laughs> what I mean is, where do you want the sleeves to come to? Well, to me. To you. <laughs> now, now they come made of different materials. What kind do you want? Well, the kind that won't shrink when I take a bath. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I'll put down flannel. Yeah, yeah. Now, what color? Oh, uh, red. Red. Yeah. No. Yeah. White is most popular. Why do you want red? Well, it's, it's prettier. And a lot redder. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm afraid you're pretty provincial. No, no I'm ugly Mortimer. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, red flannels are practically obsolete. No. Yeah, although in previous decades, were reputed to possess therapeutic qualities unexcelled in alleviating rheumatic discomfiture. The people out there are laughing at your underwear. Yeah. I bet they look just as funny in their underwear. 
Mortimer, you're always saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. Uh, How can you be so stupid? I just let nature take its course. <laughs> Good old Mortimer. I like him. Well, now, I've told you the secrets of voice throwing, and you've heard three comedy routines. So it shouldn't be too difficult for you students to become ventriloquists. Uh, what do you think, Charlie? Well, you, you've told them so many things, they, they might not know where to start. Well, now, you may have a point there. How do you start? Let's take it step by step. First, decide on the voice you're going to use for the dummy. Will it be higher or lower than your own, or a falsetto voice? Second step, learn to talk in the dummy's voice without moving your lips. I've told you how to do this, so play the record over again to refresh your memory. Third step, practice with the dummy before a mirror, holding your lips still and moving the dummy's mouth. Fourth step, put some jokes together so you have an act. Then memorize it, rehearse it over and over with the dummy. When you are ready for your first appearance, you will walk out on the stage carrying your little partner like a human being, not like a dummy. You will smile at your audience, and when you tell your jokes, you will speak up so all can hear, and you will keep the act moving. Try to get on school and church programs. The experience will be invaluable. You will be pleasantly surprised with the results. In closing now, would you like to say something, Charlie? Well, yeah. Uh, good luck, students. Fine, fine. Have you anything to say, Mortimer? Oh, you mean like, uh, hello, maybe? Oh, no, no. You What do you mean, hello? This is the end of the record. How can you be so stupid? Well, it ain't easy. <laughs> I got a fella helping me. <laughs> you get it? Yeah, yeah. Well, what should I say? Never mind. I'll say it. I wish you much enjoyment and success with your voice throwing. And maybe someday I will see you on television. But if not, have fun with your ventriloquism anyway.